Welcome viewers. Our guest today is Mr. Alan Yu, founder of Fort St. John for LNG Movement. Thank you, Alan, for coming to our program. Thank you for having me. Welcome. Please tell us about our natural gas industry. Okay. Uh, the Canadian natural gas industry. Canada is the fifth largest producer of natural gas. We could be higher in the ladder. However, we have to bring our natural gas to market. Natural gas has been a part of uh, Canada's energy mix since it was discovered in 1883 in New Brunswick. And then a few years after that, it was discovered in Alberta. As a matter of fact, we even have offshore natural gas uh, wells in Nova Scotia. So all the province and all, all the territories in Canada have natural gas reserves. It's just that the biggest uh, producer of uh, natural gas is Alberta, and we are just second to that. However, we can easily overtake Alberta so long as we can ex uh, we have the chance to bring our natural gas to market. Today, natural gas accounts for one third of Canada's energy mix. It is it is the cleanest form of fossil fuel. It is the simplest form of hydrocarbon, thus it burns very efficiently. And it has been, yeah, as I said, it's a part of the mix, and it is being used by residential, commercial, and industrial sectors of Canada. In BC, uh, we are the center. Fort St. John is the center of the oil and gas industry. The Oil and Gas Commission is here in uh, Fort St. John and all the natural gas uh, basins, wells, and production sites are here in the Northeast region. Thank you. And what's the importance of liquefied natural gas? Okay, liquefied natural gas is simply a vessel so that we can bring our natural gas to market. In, uh, let's say, overland, it is easy to send natural gas via pipes. Wherever we live, we have natural gas pipes outside our street. In Vancouver, in Toronto, anywhere, any city in Canada, you will find natural gas pipes. It goes into our house. It is a safe way of delivering natural gas. However, if we have to deliver natural gas to a site that has no pipe, the efficient way is to liquefy it because in liquefying natural gas from a volume of 600, it becomes to one part. It's just like that comic character Ant-Man reducing in size. It is also a safer way of transporting natural gas because liquefied natural gas is just like water. It's very, very cold at around 164 degrees, negative 164 degrees. It is not under pressure. It's just like water. You light it, it will not light up. So this is a very, very safe form of delivering. Now, if we can have LNG, we can bring our natural gas overseas, to overseas market like China, Japan, Korea, the Philippines, India. We can safely bring that. LNG has been in use for more than 50 years. It has been transported uh, all over the world without any accident, not even a single accident in almost 60 years. Thank you. And where have been the recent discoveries of natural gas made in our northeastern BC? Okay, uh, as far as I know, the uh, recent uh, discovery is the Liard Basin, which is located in Fort Nelson area near the Yukon border. It's not actually a new discovery. If I'm not mistaken, it was discovered in 2012. However, the recent good news, the recent discovery is that the reserves of Liard Basin has been upgraded to something like around 210 uh, trillion cubic feet to 845 or 47. So it has been upgraded. We have a lot. BC could be the next Saudi Arabia of natural gas. We have a lot. The uh, estimates of the uh, Ministry of uh, Natural Gas is that even if we just extract 20% of what we have, 
are known reserves, not even the unknown. If we just extract 20% of that, we can sustain uh, the needs of Canada and our export for the next 160 years. We have a lot. So uh, that will give us ample time to switch into renewable energy. Thank you. What's the LNG Canada project and how much revenue it could generate? LNG Canada is the project of, uh, it's, I think it's five countries. It's Shell, uh, Mitsubishi, Japan, uh, PetroChina, and Korean Gas. Yeah, and I think something else. Uh, LNG Canada is just one of the LNG plant uh, buying to be a part of Canada's liquid natural gas industry. This will be located in Kitimat. They have all the environmental clearance. They have the green light. However, we are just waiting for their final investment decision. This plant is just one of the three that I'm expecting to have final investment decision this year. Hopefully, they will change their mind and give their final investment decision. And they will be able to contribute no less than 30,000 jobs to Canada. And a good part of that, maybe around 80% of that, will be in North BC. And it will, be, it will contribute to uh, Canada's GDP uh, around 2.9 billion. That's what they say, 2.9 billion every year. 2.9 billion of what we don't have right now in this economic recession. Uh, LNG Canada can, contrib can, can, can contribute that much. However, yeah. there are other LNG plants which will also positively contribute to the Canadian economy. Pacific Northwest LNG, which is Petronas, they have given their final investment decision. We are expecting, we are eagerly expecting the uh, environmental approval on September 20. We will have a vigil for that here in Fort St. John. Because uh, once that is approved, I anticipate that they will start construction right away. And having an LNG industry of just LNG Canada, Pacific Northwest LNG, and the Squamish, this small one, they have the capacity to contribute $8 billion to the Canadian economy to, uh, in terms of GDP, add $8 billion to that every year. Also, here in Northeast BC, for the life of those LNG plants, they will be spending $5 billion every year in our own backyard. So, the uh, economic prospects of having an Ill LNG industry is too big to ignore. Thank you for explaining the details. And what environmental effect could the project have? Okay. I am glad that uh, we are with natural gas because natural gas is an easier sell than oil. Okay. Natural gas, which is methane, when it leaks, it goes up into the air. It is lighter than air. So whenever you have pipelines, if there is a leak, it will not pollute the ground. It will evaporate up in the air. Also, they say that uh, a lot of the uh, mitigation processes have been performed so that the uh, LNG plants will have significantly very, very low impact on the environment. One of the things that uh, Pacific Northwest LNG did is that instead, since it will be located in an island, instead of the natural gas pipe going under the ocean, it will be on top. So there's going to be a, like a suspension bridge. That's one of the things. Another thing that I, uh, I come from a country, the Philippines, where we see wanton destruction of the environment. However, here in Canada, our government is doing a good job. Uh, I mean, controlling, I mean, putting regulations in place. But we should also consider that nature, the environment is very resilient. It is very strong. In Prince Rupert, before there were not much environmental regulations, that there was a paper mill there. They were throwing a lot of stuff into the river and no one was complaining. And the salmons in the area survived. So in Fraser Delta, in Vancouver, 
it is developed. It's right where Vancouver is, and yet it is home to uh, salmon runs every year. It, that's one of the biggest in, in the world. And I see that yeah, LNG plant has been, and natural gas, they have been known to have very, very little effect on the environment. Take a look at the Sakhalin uh, LNG plant in Russia. I don't know why they sent scientists, they sent three scientists here to testify that it is bad for the environment. It is bad for the salmon industry. But all you have to do is look at the Wikipedia page of Sakhalin 2, the LNG plant in Russia, wherein they say that after the LNG plant was done, after it went operational, and after they dredged the river so that the uh, natural gas pipe could exist under the river, there was a record salmon harvest. For several years after that, there was a record salmon harvest. So I feel that natural gas and LNG will have very, very small impact, insignificant impact to the environment. And you have mentioned we have got regulators. They do their work too, hopefully in detail, you know, much more than an ordinary person understands. Yes. So that part overall, thank you. And what's the Fort St. John for LNG group? Oh, I see. Uh, I started Fort St. John for LNG last year to give social license, community support, or as Justin Trudeau said recently, public trust. I created the group when I noticed that the economy of Fort St. John was dipping. And I see, I recognize that Fort St. John is highly dependent. Its economy is highly dependent on natural gas. We are in this rut now because there is not much activity in the natural gas wells. So, I, well, I recognize that one of the ways that we're in we can elevate our economy, improve our economy, is to create more demand for our natural gas. And LNG is one of it. So LNG is one of the ways where we can improve, uh, I mean, uh, elevate the demand for our natural gas. So I started Fort St. John for LNG. I also started Fort Nelson for LNG. I also started Dawson Creek for LNG. I also started Prince George for LNG. So that this, com this community, just like Fort St. John, can give social license, community support, or public trust to the LNG projects, to the LNG projects awaiting uh, approval by the government. Thank you. And what major events have been organized by the volunteer group in the last few months? Okay, I am lucky to have a very active uh, board. We have uh, Lani Belcher, who is very active. She is my, she is our secretary and treasurer. You know Dan Davis. Dan Davis is my co-chair. And we have two board of directors, Chuck Fowler and Kim Swetlikoff. Together, we have been able to do a lot of petitions. We have submitted a petition. We even have submitted a petition uniquely for Fort St. John, wherein the residents of Fort St. John ask that all the liquefied natural gas plants pending approval be approved by the federal government. We have done petitions. Our surprisingly legendary uh, track rally sometime in March, wherein when we organized it, we thought that we were just going to get something like 50 trucks. On that day, we ended up with 580 trucks. It was so successful, it was so well participated that two hours after we left our starting point, trucks were still leaving the starting point. So that is the first time we saw popular support for LNG among the uh, natural gas workers here. We also organized a people power rally so that the people of Fort St. John, the ordinary citizens, can show their support. We did that in uh, April. And then after achieving social license, what more can we do? We decided uh, one of our very good uh, supporters, Gordon Green from Vancouver, gave us the idea and gave us the financial support so we can have poster ads. These are big poster ads in Ottawa. We want the lawmakers to know 
that we are suffering job market-wise in Fort St. John. Gordon Green shelled out the money and we were able to achieve that. Fort St. John for LNG, in cooperation with Gordon Green, we were able to do that. And what more can we do after that? So we decided to go to Ottawa with the support of the community with the su financial support of the community, we were able to finance a trip to Ottawa. We were able to bring our message that we are suffering here. While in Ottawa, we had the good luck of getting the support of uh, John Barlow, who was able to get us, to get me, a chance to testify in front of the Standing Committee on Natural Resources, wherein I was able to express all the uh, help that we need here and all the grievances of the oil and gas industry. Thank you. And how has Premier Clark supported the group's activities? Oh, Premier Clark, uh, we all know she started uh, the LNG, the drive for LNG industry here in BC. And uh, I am glad that she noticed Fort St. John for LNG, that she came over here in April. She personally came here and attended our People Power Rally. Also, when we went to Ottawa, Premier Clark sent us a guardian angel. She sent Neil Sweeney, uh, her uh, deputy minister, to shadow us, to help us in the background while we were in Ottawa. It's, it's not just Premier Clark who has been helping us. Senator Newfeld welcomed us and helped us in Ottawa. Bob Zimmer, our MP, was very, very good to us. And our MLA, Pat Pim, traveled all the way on his own expense to Ottawa to help us out. And of course, our very own mayor, Laurie Ackerman, has been instrumental when I formed FSJ for LNG. She was the one who encouraged me not just to form FSJ for LNG, but to make similar organization along where the pipeline is going to pass. Because social license cannot be issued entirely by Fort St. John for LNG for the entire BC. It has to have community support from Fort Nelson, from Fort St. John, to Dawson Creek, to Prince George, all the way to Kitimat Terrace and Prince Rupert. So that is how Premier Clark, she has been very, very supportive of Fort St. John for LNG. So what made you start Fort St. John for LNG? What's the inspiration behind this? Okay. Uh, sometime last November, I read an article in Alaska Highway News wherein uh, some people are starting to lose their jobs. And uh, that made me think that, wow, I noticed also that there were fewer cars traveling in Fort St. John. And come November, I can't come December, I knew that I was gonna lose my job because in our department of three persons where I used to work, there's not much business anymore. So I knew I was gonna lose my job and a lot of people in Fort St. John are also in the same boat. So, well, it got me thinking, how can I get these people rehired? That is why I started Fort St. John for LNG, because if we can have social license, if we can have these LNG plants, there will be at least 65,000 jobs created in the entire Canada, with more than 47,000 jobs being created here in BC, specifically in Fort St. John. So this is why I started Fort St. John, to be able to help all these unemployed people. So low energy prices, they have caused delays to investment decisions. How could the situation improve in future? Okay. Uh, it is unfortunate that the price of natural gas is low, but we are luckier than oil. We uh, Both oil and uh, natural gas prices went up a few weeks ago. Oil went down again, but natural gas seems to be hanging in there. As I, as I told the Standing uh, Committee on natural, uh, on natural Resources in Ottawa, the way that we can get out of these low prices is to create demand for our natural gas. Uh, if it means going on trade missions, then go for it. We should also encourage the World Bank to finance the switch 
from coal plants to natural gas plants because this will save uh, the local air quality. It will improve the local air quality of where natural gas is used and it will also clean up the air, uh, the greenhouse gases in the world. So that's one way that we can uh, sort of help out increase the price of natural gas, which is to create demand. This will also help us, aside from providing the world with natural gas, we can, Canada can also provide the world with the technology needed to switch and to operate and to build natural gas plants. Now, this has been delaying the, uh, the low natural gas price. It's delaying the financial investment decision of LNG Canada. However, the bright side is that this never did stop Pacific Northwest LNG from giving their final investment decision last year. They gave their final investment last year because, uh, like me, they are optimistic that the price of fossil fuel will eventually jump back. It is inevitable because the producers of fossil fuel are now suffering. Saudi Arabia will go bankrupt. They have been using their foreign reserves. Venezuela, a fossil fuel producer, is having food riots. They have food shortages. So eventually, it is inevitable that these suppliers will eventually cut back on their production and ease. They're not that desperate at this point. But I see that everyone will eventually cut back on their production and eventually increase the world price. So I see that the low prices of natural gas and oil in the market is just temporary. By the time it takes us to build, which is around five years, to build the Pacific Northwest LNG, to build uh, LNG Canada, I am confident the price will go up already. Thank you. And uh, every cloud has a silver lining and there is a famous quote of John F. Kennedy, don't pray for easy lives, pray to be stronger men. So how do you become stronger in such scenarios? I see, okay. To those who don't know me, I am just new to Canada. I've been in Canada two years. I've been here in Fort St. John, yeah, one year. This is my sort of a personal experiment on how I can be an advantage to the community. I started out with an easy job because I know Fort St. John for LNG, for Fort St. John to give social license, community support, or in the words of Justin Trudeau, public trust. It is very easy because it is just like preaching to the choir. However, achieving social license here in Fort St. John encouraged me. So it made me stronger because I decided to go on with the fight. I did not just stop at social license. I will not just stop with the Pacific Northwest LNG, LNG Canada. There are other, uh, there are other uh, LNG plants vying. There's at least 17 more that we need to have approved. And also, I am in, uh, in my personal planning stages of how I can transition Fort St. John for LNG into hydrocarbons. Because we all know that just 40 kilometers south of Fort St. John, we have discovered vast oil reserves. It is just in our back door. So this will, once we extract this, and if we can just bring this to market, this will make the economy of Fort St. John one of the biggest in Canada. So all these encouraging things, they, they, well, they are encouraging me. So uh, yeah, it's making me stronger. It's giving me the incentive and the will to fight on. And obviously, as you have mentioned, you know, new forms of energy, dis they are discovered. People learn uh, as the discoveries are made, new doors they open. People learn from coming all the way from coal, oil, gas. And we are also hearing about natural gas fluids, yes. more hope. So, you know, hope is always there. And as energy prices hopefully rebound, what could be the best case scenario for LNG projects? Oh, LNG products. The LNG industry here in Canada could make us the uh, Saudi Arabia of natural gas. We have the reserves. 
we have the capacity to build. We have a very good location in North America. The only problem is that Will we be able to do this in time? In time for when the demand for natural gas, the demand for LNG swings up. There are a lot of things lined up waiting for federal approval. One of these is to be able to export here in BC, in Northwest BC, in Port Alberni. We are hoping to export natural gas liquids that we extract from here in the area of Fort St. John as propane. We have a lot. All we need to do is bring them to market. We need the infrastructure to be able to bring it to market. That's all that we need. The petition that we gave to uh, the federal government, we got a response May 29. And the nice thing is that the federal government feels that our natural gas industry is right. They recognize the fact that we need to bring this to market. However, just like all of us, we have to balance this with the environment. So this is very good news for us. And I feel that we can be the next we can be the next Saudi Arabia, but we are much more responsible and we will have better products than the Middle East oil and gas. Thank you, Ellen, for your work. Oh, thank you very much. And please remember, we are all in this together as a community. Thank you. Thank you. I feel that community support. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you for having me.